G'day. Let's have a look at what's inside some of these shotgun shells that I've got here. So all of these are 12 gauge shells. These red ones up the top here are the Winchester Super X's. So they're size seven and a half shot on the inside. So what that means is these shotgun shells basically at the front just have a whole bunch of small little balls. So when this does get shot, it doesn't shoot a single projectile, but it shoots a bit of an array of a whole bunch of little, little shot shells. So how that actually differs to a standard projectile. So this is just a standard bullet. This is a 308 size round. So when this actually enters a firearm, the casing here, the brass casing sits in the chamber and then just the projectile up the top here goes inside the actual barrel and then that's what gets shot through the barrel. So this end projectile here is what actually travels through the air that gets shot. The rest of this case here is just filled with gunpowder. So that's what actually explodes, provides that pressure to push it forward. And then on the back, so you can see these are already spent anyway, but on the back, we've got just a little primer here with that little impact there from the firing pin of the actual firearm that, that shoots it. So you should be able to just pull one of these out as well. And there we go. And then we've got, that's the actual projectile that travels through the air. And then inside there is just a cavity that again, gets filled with gunpowder. So that's how a standard rifle bullet works. But then when we look at actual shotgun shells, I'll actually open this one up and we can have a look at inside and how that's different. But obviously the first thing that you notice is this seems plastic here, right? And that's exactly what it is. This is plastic. So the bottom here is actually metal. So I think this is just a thin layer of steel that actually holds that gunpowder together. Then up the top and the rest of this is just plastic. So this is actually polyethylene plastic. So it's basically the same plastic that's in in grocery bags or bottles or any sort of food packaging or any of that sort of stuff it's the most commonly used plastic so effectively this plastic here may as well be a grocery bag but obviously shotgun shells are a lot more fun than that so actually i might just dig straight into this all right so there we go we can peel that back and we can see this big plastic wad that holds everything in place. And then right up the top is these little balls that I was talking about. So this is again, shot seven and a half size. So a lot of very small little ones. So the reason that's helpful is again, if you are shooting any sort of clays or small objects at a distance, especially moving objects, it's really hard to hit that with a single projectile. So that's why here you get a whole bunch of tiny little pallets that actually travel through the air and spread out and then they have a much higher chance of actually hitting whatever object you're actually shooting at. So I'll just keep opening this up. Actually, I might leave that one there on the side. I might just open the top of another one so we can take it out in stages like that and have a little bit of a better look. I'll just leave that there. There we go. So just another different angle on this. All right, let's go. There you go, just a whole bunch of little lead. So these ones here are lead. You can get them in steel shot as well, or a bunch of different shot, but lead is sort of the standard one and that's nice and easy to produce and cheap. So I just tip that out on the side here. You can see how many is in there. There's a lot in that single round. So all of those are held in by this little cup. So just, just another plastic, another bit of plastic. There you go, another bit of plastic. And then you can just pull that out nice and easy. to see that. And then down the bottom here, we just have a little bit of a, almost a concave shape and a little bit thicker plastic down the bottom. So the reason that's there is because that just sits directly on the gunpowder. So just in there is the actual gunpowder. So I'll grab a little tissue to put that on and tip that out as well. And just tip that out as well. So I can have a look. There we go. So that was actually quite compressed in there because when they do manufacture this, there is quite a bit of pressure holding that gunpowder in place to ensure uniform ignition and burn. And then down the bottom there, what you can see right down the bottom, if this does focus, you might just be able to see it there in the center. And then on the other side here, so this golden bit here, that's the actual primer. So when this does sit inside the firearm, the firearm has a striking pin or a hammer that strikes this. So it'll hit it just right in the middle. And as it does that, it'll hit, it'll squish the chemicals that are inside that. By doing so, it'll set it off. So there'll be a little bit of an explosion inside. And then on the other side, 
not sure if you'll be able to see because there is a bit of grunt powder in there. I might actually cut this open a little bit better just to explain that a bit more. There we go. We can see that a lot easier now. So just inside there where that primer is. So once the primer goes off, it bursts that little seal there and it just basically spits out a bit of flame into straight into that gunpowder. So the reason that's there is gunpowder on its own just doesn't ignite. Even if you put pressure on it or hit it or anything like that, it will not ignite. It's stable. It needs to be exposed to a flame. So the moment you put a flame to this, this will go off and set on fire. So if you just hit this, nothing's going to happen. And in the fire, in the fire, the firing pin will actually strike something. So if you just strike the gunpowder, it won't go off. That's why any bullets will have this primer in the in the back of it. So same as any of these other ones, you can see these have been struck, and that's just a little indent of that firing pin, and that's how it leaves it in there. So then once basically that spits out a bunch of fire, that fire will almost instantly ignite all of this gunpowder. The gunpowder is then the actual fuel that then just explodes and pushes this wad. So pushes up against this wad on this side here. There's just a little bit of, I guess, almost shock absorptions in this. I'm not exactly sure why that's done and why it's not just a straight bit of plastic to hold it there. If anyone does know the specific reason for that, definitely leave it down in the comments. I'd be interested to know. But the way it looks like this is done is almost to deflect a little bit. So my guess is when the gunpowder does ignite, it pro provides a lot of pressure against this. And this, this here will flex a little bit to absorb it and then it'll basically get pushed through the chamber and then unflex outward. So produce that little bit of extra kick near the end. That would be my guess because of the way this is structured. But again, if you do know, if you do have a guess, leave it in the comments. I'd be interested to know to know what you guys think or what you guys know, it'd be even better. And then up the top, we'd again, just have this ward. So in here is where all of these little pallets will end up sitting. So this is really nice. A lot of shotguns will have a smooth bore, so a smooth barrel. So that's just basically pushes this or guides this plastic wad through it and it just travels nice and smooth and goes through and then it all just disperses when it does come out on the other side. So that's pretty much this one. The other thing that I do have here is I have some slugs. So you can see this obviously looks very different but from the color down the bottom here you can see this is a light load so it just has that brass quite short and then this one has the brass so actually this is other metal but the one on the slug is actually brass so you can see that's a lot higher so that usually means that there's a lot more gunpowder in there because it'll just basically deflect that pressure a lot better forward and not back into the chamber at all but I'm not sure if I actually explained this but the reason why you can have plastic in these shotgun shells is because it's got a really big area up the top so there is obviously a very high pressure but once this sits in the chamber it gets closed off strikes here when it explodes all that pressure will just push everything forward and it's got quite a big gap so that there isn't as much pressure in these chambers whereas for an actual single projectile the chamber is only this small here that this the actual projectile will sit in so when all of that powder goes off it exerts a much higher pressure in the actual chamber of the gun so that's why this is all brassed here to actually just protect the chamber a little bit more and, and push some of that pressure forward to then actually get the projectile to travel at a much faster velocity through that barrel. So the main reason is because there's a lower pressure inside the chamber of, of shotgun rounds. The other, the other nice thing with using plastic is it's a lot cheaper than actually brass. It's a lot easier to work with and it does make it quite lightweight as well. This is a lot lighter than having a whole metal shell around here. So it just makes the whole thing nice and round. And the nice thing is as well is it does act a little bit as a little bit of a lubricant. So as you do put this in the barrel, it is just this plastic that's, that's quite smooth and doesn't, doesn't wear or scratch the barrel as much as well. So there's numerous benefits to it. But again, this is a slug. So I'll just try to dig into this from the top and get that actual slug out and have a look at it. So basically this being a slug, it just means it's one single big projectile. So I guess probably similar to your normal normal bullets, they have that single projectile. This is the same sort of thing, except this travels at a lower velocity than your standard, standard bullets, and it is generally much thicker. So there we go, just pull that out. So this is a this is a one ounce slug. So this slug is fully made from lead. And this specific one has these three cutouts at the front. So when this does impact an object, it will break up along those lines there. And we can see the bottom or the back of it as well is hollow inside. The other, the other neat thing here is as well, you can see this is rifled. So these does have these little 
grooves that go at an angle. So the reason that is, is because you shoot this out of a smooth bore shotgun. So the actual barrel will be smooth, but because of the rifling on this, this will actually produce rotation as this does travel through the barrel. Now, the reason that does that happens is same as your standard projectiles except in standard projectiles the projectiles are smooth but the rifle is actually rifled hence the short name rifle so the projector will actually spin and it will start spinning as it travels through the barrel and then it reaches the air it continues to spin so the reason it does that is it just keeps much better stability than if it just tumbles through the air and, and travels however like that but if it does spin it'll keep that momentum around it turn and then travel in that straight trajectory and it's a lot more precise that way so either way, this here is a slug. I'll just compare it to a bunch of these little projectiles here. So obviously very different, but this is for very different purposes. And then inside that actual slug casing, it, that just seems to be a cardboard. So a little bit of cardboard that I can pull out. There you go. So it literally just a sandwich of cardboard. I don't think there's anything else in that. And then we have a little plastic, so that's going to be the plastic ward alternative. See if I can get that out like this, otherwise I'll just cut it open a bit more. Okay, there we go. So you can see just a, another plastic wad, but quite different. Quite different to that one. So the bottom design is very similar. We've We've got that concave design as well, just to absorb as much of that pressure to actually, oh, from the, the pressure from the gunpowder to push everything forward. And then it still also has this little bit of a, I don't know, see that, that little bit of a zigzag design. So again, almost a little bit of a compression design to it as well. Again, definitely leave a comment down there to see, to see what your guess for that is, or, or if you do know it, that's even better. But I reckon it is just to compress it a little bit, just so that initial spike isn't as much um or the kickback isn't as much and this does absorb it a little bit and then push back out as it travels through the barrel so i guess for comparison that's just how that sits I'm not sure what that cardboard is in there for as well but that's how that sits and then so all of this will get expelled out of the firearm these two objects have very little inertia so they will just basically get stopped by the air and just drag and just fall down nice and quick and then the projectile will continue to travel forward but then inside here, I might not be able to see it on camera that well. Let's see if I can light it up a little bit. There we go. So, oh, above the camera. Um, we just got that gunpowder inside there, so you can see that. If it does focus, come on. There we go. So, just more gunpowder sitting in there. So, I guess it would be that there's more gunpowder in this one because it it is a slug. So. They usually are full loads, but let's tip that out and see if we can compare it. So slightly different looking gunpowder because it is a, well actually no, it is the same brand. It's both Winchester, but it'll be law enforcement ammunition. Not sure, but it, the, the gunpowder looks quite different. I'll bring that up to the camera actually. It's a lot shinier. There we go. So this one on the right here is a slug and then the one on the left is, is from that bird shot. So interesting, seems like about the same amount um, of of that. I'm not gonna weigh them, I haven't got a little scale right here, but may, maybe it's slightly different, maybe it's the same. Um, and then down the bottom again, the same, you won't be able to see, but the same, same sort of principle as the other one. We've got that little hole there from the primer and on the other side as well, putting them together, basically the same sort of thing. So again, you've got that outside shell and then you've got the primer inside. What I didn't mention before is all of them, the rounds will have this little lip here. So that little lip is just for the extractor to grab hold. So once this does sit inside the chamber, it'll be usually nice and flush. And then a little extractor will come in and then just clip on this rim and actually pull that project, pull the case out and um, and eject that from, from the actual round. So a new one can come in. So I think that's pretty much it. I think I've covered all the points, opened up a couple of these ones. There's another close look at this one, just so you can see it sort of cross-sectionally cut away. A lot of empty space just in between that. But that's it. That's what's inside these couple of shotgun shells. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below, it helps. And if you wanna see more of this sort of random stuff, definitely consider subscribing. Have a good one.